segment of the day. And as you guys already know, this is the part of the show where we like to find a clip of somebody doing something, saying something so absurd, so ridiculous, that even though we're going to make fun of them for a couple of minutes, there's not much else we could say to them except... Oh, man. Exactly. Thank you, President Biden. Uh, and this one here is uh, going back to the... Uh, Old backyard for me here in Massachusetts with the New England Patriots player, Christian Barmore. He uh, got pulled over the other day. This guy's out for the year, injured. Uh, well, he kind of has like a blood thing. He's on blood thinners. Like he had blood clots happening. So uh, out for the season. The Patriots actually paid him his whole salary too. He's one of their best players. Um, and they did right by the player took care of him. Hey, you got a medical thing. It's not like he like tore his ACL. Like this guy, you know, blood clots preseason. We got to figure this out. Uh, Take care of yourself. Your health is more important. Boom. What? Nothing. Oh, okay. We'll take care of you. We'll we'll give you your full salary. Um, You know, he makes a good amount of money. They just re-upped him. I think he's the highest paid player on the team. Uh, Team captain. Uh, You know, this guy's the real deal on the field. And he happened to get pulled over at one in the morning uh, in the mean streets of Providence, Rhode Island. From what I'm told, leaving the uh, foxy lady gentleman's establishment uh, after having himself a a, a night, I guess. And the video we have here, the first one, uh, just shows you the way he treated the officers that showed up to his, uh, his, his window to uh, see what was going on. They pulled him over because he had expired plates. He was covering the license plate, so they couldn't couldn't even see it, um, you know, completely in the wrong here. And he got pulled over, and, and the body cam footage we're about to show you is from TMZ Sports. Uh, got to give them the credit here in case they try to pull our video down. I'm not sure how that copyright stuff works. We just hope that – 98 episodes. Well, 98 episodes. Figure it out by 98 episodes, about uh, 10 viewers per week. So I don't think they're worried about us too much unless we're talking about COVID. Then they completely remove us. So, uh, all right, let's go with, uh, you know, Bamor being being hostile and rude right off, right out of the jump here to these police officers. So let's stop it, bro. I pull you off for no reason. Like, bro. literally, you pull me over, bro. I'm dropping 10 miles per hour, cuz. Okay, I ain't so even driving fast. I can't even see what state the plates from, right? No, I just told you. I'm not even from out here. I'm from Florida. I'm from Florida. 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 I'm not even from out here, dog. This is literally, I'm from Florida. I play out here. I play football out here for the Patriots. Like, for the Patriots? Cool, yeah. All right. For the Patriots. So, they, so you're going to be disrespectful, right? Man, look. Because I was not even respectful when I came, right? I you want to throw the papers at me, right? Nobody throw the papers at you, sir. You want to throw the papers at me, man? Nobody throw papers at you, bro. I'm right. just saying, you pull me over for no reason, right. Second, second, okay. All right, you gonna let me talk, bro? Go ahead, bro. Second, right? I acted in my lights, what, back there? And it took you a while to stop, all the way over here? Bro, because I, I couldn't, I'm really trying to pull the spot, my boy. Trying to pull the spot. You could have stopped. Look, look how much room you have back there. Come on, cuz. Come on, we grown man here, bro. Look, come on, cuz. I pulled over for you, dog. Right, come on. Right. I'm saying, I acted in my lights back there, right? Yeah. No? How do we start the episode, Juice? What were we talking about? People, people these days, what? Uh, not serious people. Come on, bro. Cause not serious people, right? That's how this this gentleman chooses to to act when he's pulled over by the police in the middle of the night, in the wrong, and he's going to be giving them an attitude like that. I, I don't know if you could tell there. He had his mother on speakerphone. He called his mom because the cops pulled him over, and he had her on speaker trying to talk. Saying, oh, officer, officer. And he's saying, hold on, mom. Like, are you kidding? <laughs> this guy's a grown ass adult in millions of dollars. I wasn't even speeding, my boy. Like, why is he yeah. talking? He's talking like and... that, like crazy. And the, the thing that the cop brought up towards the end there, uh, 
like, oh, you know, I put my lights on back there. He's saying, apparently, Barmore didn't come to a stop right away. He did what they call a rolling stop. So he slowed down and he kind of kept going. And, and I guess I'm not a law enforcement expert at all here, but from what I understand, that's a sign to them uh, that they're trying to stash stuff, right? Someone's doing that. They don't pull over right away. Why, why are they still moving? Why are they still moving? There's nobody. That, it's not like they're on the highway. Looks like they're on a road, not much going on around them. Just pull over, dude. Stop. But that tells them, you know, they have to go. They don't know who this person is. They don't know what they have. Are they hiding a gun under the under the seat? Are they stashing drugs? Are they? It's one in the morning. This guy's not pulling over for you. And then you start talking to him, and he's hostile and combative right away. And then tries to drop the 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 Patriots player thing. Juice, tell tell them what you told me pre-show. <laughs> I was that. saying, I was saying maybe if you told me you were not on the Patriots, would give you a pass. <laughs> seems seems <laughs> not so bad that they might give you double time. <laughs> It's a strike against you nowadays. It's so right? true. No, no, I'm a Celtics guy. I'm not, I'm not Celtics. <laughs> this is not Tom Brady's Patriots, man. <laughs> Holy way for you, brother. Uh, unbelievable. So that's how we started. In in this is on the heels of the one we showed a few weeks ago with Tyreek Hill from the Miami Dolphins. Remember the way he was treating those police officers, trying to roll his window up, not listening to them, not cooperating. And and Barmore did this exact same thing. When has it worked? Like exactly. Me and you, like again, we don't look like it now. We played sports growing up, right? We actually did play sports at one point in our lives, Juice. I got myself a million penalties in hockey, uh, struck out in baseball, um, you know, committed fouls in basketball, always chirped the refs. I was a big chirper, always doing it, and not once. Not one time did that referee ever say, oh, you know what? Uh, you didn't trip that kid. You don't have to go to the penalty box. Oh, you know what? That was a charge. You know, we're going to turn, reverse the call and send it that way. Never. <laughs> it's never going to work that way. Um, and, and I don't know why people think that it's going to work when you're dealing with the police on the side of the road. Shut up. Give them your license. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Deal with it after the fact. This guy's a multi-millionaire. Sue the shit out of him if you can afterwards. If they disrespect you, if they treated you wrong, if there was police brutality. Uh, but you're not going to win that argument in the moment on the street with them. Crazy. Uh, Juice, you want to give the, the last part of the interaction? Uh, this is when they got him out of the car at this point, uh, and he tried the Tyreek Hill thing. He started to roll the window up on them. And, and that's when they kind of, I think the police did a great job here. And to be honest with you, I was in favor of the way the police treated Tyreek Hill and the Miami thing, dragging his ass out of the cop, putting him down on the ground because of the way he was acting. I think they had every right to do this to Barmore here, but they didn't, they showed restraint and it shows in the, in the, in the footage and, and they come off looking, looking great. And Barmore looks like a jackass. So just give, give us that one. I ain't getting out shit. You ain't getting out? You want to get a charge? You just want to get your charge. Charge for what, dog? Yo, there you go. Relax. What's I going to do? What's I going to do? All y'all talking. Come on. 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 I would have Ridiculous, that dude! A long time ago, you see him doing like the like he was like like yeah. trying to like do that to them do, too, boy. And then like re fixing around his back pants, he was Are reaching you under the me? seat at one point. I would have, yes, Ridiculous, and and no surprise, complete Saturday night full sweatsuit, right? <laughs> not serious people, Jews. <laughs> JC would not be having that. None of that. Like, come on, dude. And, and again, I love sweatpants. Believe me, 
as soon as I get home. But uh, and and I still go out in sweatpants sometimes too. But I I really try not to. You're putting a oh, you're putting up guilty. a tough thing because if somebody I feel guilty you about there, it, dude. I feel guilty. I really catches do. you out with sweatpants. Mm-hmm. Uh, be... yeah, I'm I'm screwed. Yeah. I'm screwed. But it's one of those things where I'm like, I, I honest to God, like I feel a little bit too old to, to be wearing sweatpants out of the house uh, in most situations. Uh, so I, I don't know. The whole this whole thing was was ridiculous. Uh, this is a, a opportunity to kind of show why the body cameras uh, are actually a good thing. Uh, I think a lot of police officers were against it to start, and and it was like. No, you kidding me? But it just shows you. It goes to show us how bad the public treats these people. Yeah, and just, not, he's not suing them for anything. No, it's a thankless job. Uh, they get treated uh, completely hostile. Every situation they go into is like that. Someone who's pissed off, you're pulling them over, giving you a hard time, giving you an attitude. Uh, it, it's everything they do gets dealt with like that, and it's it's just terrible. Um, and that. That was it from Bamar. So I think it was horrible. Uh, and this is coming on the heels of a week before another player for the Patriots, Jabril, Jabril Peppers, uh, arrested for uh, slapping and strangling his girlfriend, throwing her out of the house uh, half naked uh, and having cocaine found in his wallet. Like, so you get a again, raise, you get a raise in the NFL for that. It's ridiculous. In, in the other guy, Hill that we talked about from the dolphins, He's got uh, 10 children by nine different women. He was in college. He uh, strangled and beat his girlfriend there as well. The reason, the whole reason why he was drafted in the sixth round instead of the first round uh, because of that. And it's just like, why do we continue to reward people that are not serious people like this? People that are just complete scumbags because they can run fast. They can catch a ball. Like I, I get it in a way, but it also just turns me off from the NFL, man. Um, less and less each week. And I know Juice, you're a big college guy. You'd prefer to watch the college game. It's crazy. I haven't and watched one NFL game. No joke. To be honest with you, like I was going to talk about the Peppers thing a couple of weeks ago when that happened, uh, and the tie-in I was going to use was was the difference between the NFL and the NHL. Milan Lucic for the Bruins got arrested for slapping his girlfriend last year. His ass got cut. He was gone. And and it's, I guess, easy to do because he's he's kind of stinks and, and he's not <laughs> he's not a great player anymore. So it's like, okay, you know, would they do that if it was the best player on the team? I don't know. But they cut him. He was gone. The other guy that I was asking you guys in the group text about that had a checkered past about, you know, racist comments, uh, hazing uh, in yeah, his a 14 past. 14 year old retiring. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like they signed the Bruins signed that guy. They got so much backlash for it uh, from within the locker room and the press that they cut him before he even appeared on the on the ice with the team. Uh, and, and I feel like that goes to show you a little bit of a difference between the NHL and the NFL, where the NFL will give these guys chance after chance after chance and continue to give them money and opportunities when they're just bad people. And and uh, that's a broad stroke there. Not maybe far more specific because, uh, in all honesty, Juice, he he has slightly turned around this situation, and I do want to paint the whole picture for you guys. So even though this is the come on man, and we we do want to highlight just how in the wrong he was with that, he has released a statement since then, and I do want to give uh, give a minute to kind of say what he what he what he said. He, he put out a tweet. Oh, sorry, before this tweet. Which is which is an apology tweet, and he actually I think did the right thing here. He the night that it happened, the next day he put out a tweet about um, racism, cops targeting him because he's a black man, and this that, and the other thing that he deleted. Uh, so again, it, it it just hammers home the point. This guy's a famous millionaire athlete who's talking about police targeting him for being black. What's that do to other black men out there, young black men who aren't famous like him? There's a reason why. Black guys are afraid of the police, and it's because of people like Baumor saying that when he has an interaction with them where he's completely wrong and frames it as cops being racist. Tyreek Hill, completely wrong, frames it as cops being racist towards him. No wonder why people who aren't famous are going to think that. But uh, Baumor took down that tweet, 
Um, and then, you know, put this up. So I'm going to read from it real quick here. Uh, quote, I want everyone to know that I'm sorry and I take full accountability for my actions. I apologize to the Providence Police Department, my teammates, and my family. My mother was a police officer and I understand the pressures related to their job, which I didn't make any easier by reacting in the manner that I did. I am using this as an opportunity to learn and do better. I have already met with the members of the Providence Police Department to apologize in person. It is my hope that they accept my sincere apology. That meeting is just is just the first step of many that I am taking on the route to self improvement. End quote. So I, I'll tip my cap to that. Going to meet in person is a big step because otherwise, on that when you were reading, I'm like, oh, just agent wrote this in major. Exactly. No, no. To, like, she showed up. That goes an actual in 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 <clears throat> talks to these people, man to man, man to woman. I, I think it was all guys there. But uh, if he faces up to, hey, you know what? I, I, I reacted horribly. Whatever. He sounds like he's owning it. That's a good thing. The the only catch that I'll say is that I think he needs to take it one step further and, and also uh, not avoid the race issue of this either. And and be like, hey, I apologize to the to the black community out there who I, I'm my actions help fuel a negative. Per, per, uh, you know, wh what am I looking for? Juice. A negative impression. perception, yeah, perception. Uh, of of police encounters with with young black men, and I was completely wrong and in the fault in this situation, and, and escalated it, and and that's not good for the black culture, black community. Uh, law enforcement is not out to get me because I'm a black man. I I was in the wrong, didn't react well, and escalated the situation, and I'm working on that, and I, I just want others to realize like uh, something like that needs to be stated as well, because it, it's ridiculous. Me and you can't say it. We're, we're two white guys here that are in our forties, like, right. Or, or about to be 40. Uh, and uh, like, people are just going to say, we can't relate. We don't know what it's like. We're, we're, we're just white privileged guys. But at the end of the day, I know how to interact when I get pulled over. I know. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Like that, that's common sense. And, and it gets spun that, you know, Oh, as a black man, I, it's sad that I need to explain to my child how to interact when they get pulled over by a police officer. No, it's not. Every child needs to learn that. When you when you get your license, uh, I'm going to have that talk with both of my kids about how to act if you get pulled over. It's not you're not being treated any differently because you're black. You're being treated differently because of the way what you're giving off, what you're doing, your reaction. So, I don't know, Juice. It's <laughs> keeping it tight. That's all. Keeping it real tight. We went a little long, but I think it was worth it. Hopefully, uh, get those subscriptions up, get those numbers up. Subscribe, like, share the show. And uh, Juice, you got anything else to add to this Barmore story? No, not much. You covered it all. all. Right. Awesome. So, Christian Barmore, uh, for your initial reaction with the police officers, the New England Patriots in general, for your <laughs> lack of. Uh, Lack of discipline with your players right now. You guys have earned yourselves one big, fat, classic. Come on, man. And that's the show for tonight. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, and until next week, thanks for having, for having us. Me. Me. Us. We. we. <laughs>